an event is a subset of the sample space of an experiment. For example, the event of an even number from the experiment of rolling a die. Here we have the sample space of rolling a die, which is the set 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. An even number, the qualifying element is going to be 2, 4, and 6. So this subset, 2, 4, and 6, is the event, which is a subset of the sample space. Here's what's called a two dice box method. This is for working out a problem that involves rolling two dice and their outcomes. Here's a rep visual representation of the sample space, which consists of the 36 outcomes. Let's say we look at this 3 1. It means that you roll the 3 on the first die and you roll the 1 on the second, on the second die. And when you roll two die, it doesn't really matter which one's first, which one's second. But rolling three on the first and rolling one on the second is a different outcome than rolling one on the first, rolling three on the second, even though they effectively mean the same thing. Suppose we want to know the number of elements in the event, some less than or equal to four. Here's how we're going to use this box. Look at the outcome 1 and 1. The sum of the two outcomes is going to be 2, as indicated in the corner here. 2 is less than or equal to 4, so I've circled it here. And here, 2 plus 1 is 3. 3 is less than or equal to 4, I've circled this here. Here, 3 plus 1 is 4, is less than or equal to 4, so I've circled 1 here and so on and so forth, and here I've circled these 6 for this event, sum less than or equal to 4. And we add the number of circles up here, and the answer is 6. For any experiment, each outcome is said to have a probability, or weight, the likelihood of that event compared to the other ones. For example, the probability of getting ahead when you flip a coin means the likelihood of getting ahead compared to getting a tail. The probability of all possible outcomes of an experiment must sum up to one. And this is very important to remember. For some experiments, it's intuitive that all outcomes of the experiment are equally likely. For example, let's say you're rolling a fair die, and here are the outcomes, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It should be obvious that they are going to be equally likely. And since the probabilities have to sum up to 1, and these are equally likely, each element has a probability of 1, 6. And let's consider this following experiment. An urn has red, white, and blue balls. Let outcome 1 equals red, outcome 1 equals white, and outcome 3 equals blue. Here O means outcome, and you're going to see that on your homework or exam. The probability of drawing a red is twice as likely as drawing a white, and the probability of drawing white is equal to the probability of drawing a blue. So how do we solve that? First thing you need to remember is that the probability of outcome 1 plus the probability of outcome 2 plus the probability of outcome 3 is going to be equal to 1. Since these three outcomes put together give you the sample space, here W stands for weights, and you're going to see that notation on your homework and test as well. Here I've written out the equation 2W2 equals W1. That's because it says here, the, prob the probability of drawing red is twice as likely drawing white. 
W1 is red. Red is twice as likely as white. So W1 is twice of W2. So 2 times W2 is W1. And here W2 equals W3. Drawing white is equal to the probability of drawing blue. Here I have used W2 as what I call the anchor. So here W2 stay the same. And I'm going to substitute everything else in terms of W2. So here I've substituted the W1 with 2W2 and W3 with W2. We solve, we see that W2 is 20.25, W3 is 0.25, and W1 is 0.5. When working through these problems, there's an easier way to think about it, which, I, which we've included in the practice problems. So if you want to go take a look at that. Here, if you're not sure what the deck of cards is consist of, you should go look at the deck of card tutorial located in the quick tip.